66 tattoo man. Why is that? I have 123 tattoos and 120 of them are Route 66. Which is kind of a stretch because I'm only five foot seven and I don't have a lot of decent places left to put any. You might, uh, you might end up having to get some tattoos in places that you can't show people. Well, I don't want to get arrested for showing a tattoo, so I probably won't. So uh, this um, event here, I mean Joplin, what do you think about this? This is a big deal. Uh, they got, they have uh, Tomater here. They have Lightning McQueen here. And they've got a lot of vendors. They got some nice people. Uh, Michael Wallace, the voice of the sheriff, is here. And uh, there's a, a bunch of people. It's, it, it's going to be a good deal this weekend. Yeah, and um, I mean, what do you think about uh, seeing new generation of 66ers coming up here? If it wasn't for the new generation of 66ers, it would soon. Uh, Klein to exist, so we got to get them interested in it, get them, get them started somewhere. So the younger, the better. So we um, we talk about going up and down the road, and you know we've taken this dog. She's a '66 year. She's uh, uh, she been all the way from one end to the other, one peer peer to peer, basically. Uh, I mean, what do you tell people about, you know, taking the time and getting off the interstates and taking the U.S. route like 66? I think people need to uh, maybe slow down a little bit. Uh, the interstate is good if you want to get there real fast, but you don't see anything. You take the take 66 or whatever road, some other one, but 66 one is... Uh, it's the, it's the people. Maybe not the places, but the people is what makes the road. That's, uh, that's what I think. I mean, that's what I like about it. I like to say, uh, and maybe react to this saying, slogan, I like to come up with slogans, you know, U.S. routes is where we are, it's where you find us. Oh yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, you know, it's not just 66, but a lot of the secondary routes, you know, uh -huh. where you have to slow down and go through towns. And Correct. Maybe right. stop at a cafe instead right. of a like, big chain. And yeah, you want to stop at the mom and pop so they can still stay in business and still keep the mother road alive. Because if you don't, uh, they'll cease to cease to exist and they'll go out of business and then people wonder, well, what happened to them? Well, you didn't stop, is why. And here in Joplin, the reason for bringing this event here was because of the tornado and everything. Uh, I think that had a lot to do with it. Uh, boy, Joplin, the last couple of years, have, have had their uh, bad times. I mean, when something like that comes along and destroys the third of the town, uh, that's that's a big deal. So anytime, anytime you can get something to raise money or awareness for a town or 66 or whatever, that helps uh, everybody. It's a comeback for Joplin and yeah. Galena. Back, Joplin, Galena, uh, Carthage, uh, everywhere. Yeah. What did you say, Miami? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
what are some of your favorite places now? I mean, you were talking about the Boots Court. Can you yeah. tell me the, tell the story of the Boots Court? Well, the Boots Court is a, a place, I think, that was built in 1946. But you, you changed tattoos. I mean, you had, yeah. you had to add a tattoo. Why? Well, it was actually, it was called the Boots Court to start with. But then they changed it, I don't know the year, to Boots Motel. I have the tattoo of the Boots Motel, and when they changed it to the Boots Court, I said, I guess you know what you're going to force me to do, and that's, I had to go get a, a tattoo of the new Boots Court sign, I got it yesterday, and uh, when they, when he got finished with it, he had to wake me up because I fell asleep as he was giving it to me, and that just don't usually happen to most people. So where's the Boots Motel one? The Boots Motel is uh, right in there somewhere. I see it. Don't laugh. <laughs> hey, these people are here at the, the festival too. Safari people. Yeah. Oh, Safari Motel's here? Yeah, the owners are here. Oh, yeah, I like that hotel. That's a nice hotel. Yeah. What, do you stay in that one? Uh-huh. Last year, yeah. Pretty cool. Are you a little 66er? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, nice. I like their radio. It's pretty cool where it's an old fashioned one, but it's playing new music. It's neat out. How old are you? Ten. Ten. Wow. Ten that, that's the way. That right there is the, what we got to do. We got to get people like him yeah. interested. I was on Route 66 last year, but yeah, when I was nine last year, I was on Route 66, and we're going, we were on our way to Ohio last month for a month. We like, stayed there for a month, and then we went back. Now we're doing it again. Uh huh. That's great. That is great. We have and we have the dining bag too, so we're eating. Uh -huh. We're also eating at Route 66 restaurants that are still open. You're right. Anytime you can uh, maybe get the uh, the easy guide or uh, uh, hotel and dining guide and fo follow that as much as you can, that helps everybody out. You, you have a better, you have a more of a fun time uh, visiting, and it helps the business and it helps Route 66, and every, everybody's for the better of that way. Well, we saw Gary yesterday. Gary oh, how long did you have to stay? <laughs> how long were we there? Three two hours? hours? Oh, more than that. Oh, two, oh longer more than, than two? More than two. Oh, more than I don't think last, time, two. last time it was six or eight hours. Yeah, we last were there on Halloween, Halloween day. Oh, Lord. Last month, um, I, we, me and my dad were there, and I was hoping Gary and I got a free T-shirt. <laughs> that one, yeah. Yep. <laughs> We got I didn't. I didn't think that one would fit you. So I was hoping Gary would be Oh, you don't mean that one. You mean putting on prices? Uh, yeah. And I got that. I also helped him cut watermelon for a European motorcycle tour. Uh huh. But yeah, it was pretty cool. He usually has. And we were like there all day. I think it was like when we left. It was like 5 p.m. Yeah. He usually has free watermelon, free sodas, or free water. he has something free. Yeah, free water, free. He has free something all the time. But he's not there to stay in business. He's there for the road. You know? Right. Right. He, uh, you couldn't meet a nicer guy than Gary Turner at yeah. Gay Parita, that is for sure. Uh huh. He's uh, the spirit of the route. The spirit of the hat two days ago. This hat? I got it two days ago. Yeah, that's why I was going to ask you. You got that from. Yeah. <laughs> Here at Route 66. That's, that's the, you got to keep it alive, that's for sure. Okay, all right. Do you have anything you can add? Anything we didn't say? Have you ever made I can't a, think of a soul. I just can't think of anything. Have you ever seen the red man with all those stickers on it and the Route 66 sticker on the hood? Um, well, that's a guy named Rich, and he's also a cool guy. He's, um, he used to be a road geek. He wasn't interested in the people and just the road, but now he's... Now he's interested in the people and the road too. So but that's another thing. I mean, it's just the road, really. It's not the road; it's the people. Right. It's the people. The people make the road. And they're keeping it alive. And they're keeping it alive. Okay, excellent. Thank you. you uh, can I get you to say and spell your name again? I have weird Alzheimer's. My name is Ron Jones. R O N J O N E S. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Returning patio furniture, we ordered online to Home Depot because of a problem with the shipper.
Not a very good experience with Estes trucking, right? Right. Right. So I guess Home Depot loses another customer. That is an old, the sign that is was all rusted and the paint was peeling. I said, I want you, when you do the tattoo, I want the tattoo to look exactly like that sign. <laughs> I don't want you to make the sign new. Because mm -hmm. when people go by there, they don't see a new sign. They see an old rusted paint chipping off and every time. They want to see the patina. Yeah. I have 123. Oh, wow. And 120 of them are Route 66. <laughs> Six or seven tattoos that are going to be destroyed because I have.
living history of the route. Right, and I've, li I've never, I've lived less than three miles from Route 66 all my life. And what do you think of this? Everybody's making a big deal about the road here. About them building it up, you mean? Yeah, I mean. Oh, I think it's wonderful. I used to ride my bicycle down Route 66 when I was in high school, four miles to town, three errands for my mother. some of the reactions you're getting to your... Oh, they're quite interested in these old cards over here from Joplin and the area. And I've got, of course, this board with all the songs from Route 66 on it. Mm, I saw that. And then I've got... Uh, these are local cards here that I have. Got Lakeside, which is part of Route 66. Did you ever meet Bobby Troop? No. Would you ever like to have met Bobby Troop? No, probably. <laughs> I sold his music back then, and then uh, Michael Wallace. Uh, I just met him for the first time. I've read his book about it. Oh, you met him here? Mm -hmm. Like today? Today, just a few about an hour ago. Oh, wow. so, I guess I'm kind of asking people, you know, there's a lot of uh, interest in a, just a little bit of asphalt, but it's more than just the asphalt. Mm -hmm. What is it is about the route that's making it? Making it come back? I don't know. They come from foreign countries over here, and I don't know why, and they bring their own cars and their own motorcycles and, and ride their route when they could rent a car here and drive so. Is it interesting to see a Frenchman on a, on a Harley? No. Or uh, a lot of Germans. Germany and Japan and just all over, I'd say. Okay. All right. Is there anything you can add? Anything we can talk about? Oh, I can't think of too much else. I think I told you I had a 1932 Dodge that I drove. Yep. Is there a picture right there? Right. Uh-huh. I see that. Is that you by it? Right here. Mm -hmm. That's my cousin. <laughs> and then I drove this 41 Oldsmobile on Route 66 a long time. Cars were a little bit different back then. Right. This one just didn't hold enough people. <laughs> uh. Okay, all right, thank you. Yes.
want me to look to you? Okay, good. And I'm going to sit down so that you're looking to my level. And uh, what would you like your name, your title to be? Uh, author? Well, probably the best would be author and actor. Author and actor. Sure. Well, that's the actor part. So, what I really wanted to talk to you about, and very specific, is um, your wife mentioned that this is the most successful festival here in Joplin. And, uh, I mean, what can you say of that, about the spirit of the route, and you know, especially what Joplin has been through? We've been doing these international Route 66 festivals for about 20 years now, and they've been all over, uh, up, up and down the mother road, you know, and uh, in some states we've been there multiple times. But this is the very first one of the festivals held in Missouri. And of course it's long overdue. And when my Route 66 Alliance and others were deciding on the next city, in Missouri, of course, many people came forward, St. Louis, Springfield, Joplin, but it was a no-brainer to pick Joplin. Uh, there was no question in our mind that this was the city that was meant to be for this festival. It was tailor-made because like the road, and as the road has been doing, this is a city that knows about resurrection and revival and rising out of the ashes like the legendary phoenix and what we've been struck by and what I'm continually struck by are the resiliency of the people here and the spirit of the people and this can-do attitude and this I mean it's the classic not to trivialize it making lemonade out of lemons you know faced with a catastrophic storm and that tragedy what were they to do sit on their laurels and cry and moan and they immediately pitched in and immediately started moving forward with a lot of good help from neighbors and, and others and and all of this speaks to the best part of route 66 you know a road that has had its ups and downs but a road that has always been here to serve the country whether it's in the roaring 20s or the dirty 30s when it became a, a road of Dust Bowl migrants and depression refugees or during the war years when it served the country and the great heyday years when it entertained us and then su survived and came back from the limbo period to this great renaissance period and, and, and now a wonderful future for the road. So uh, Joplin and Route 66 go together. They're just naturals together. And uh, and that's why, even before this festival began, I knew it was going to be the best one. So is there anything you can add, anything we didn't want to talk about other than that? I mean, we saw Gary Turner yesterday. Well, if you saw Gary yesterday, I hope you had a lot of film. <laughs> we were there for two hours. G Gary is, is Gary's representative of what the road's all about. And the road, of course, is made up of so many different kinds of people, places, things. And, and, and we have this whole necklace of attractions, man-made and natural, along the way that keep people on the road. But the best resource, the best treasure of the road are the people are the people like Gary are the the men and women who are cooking the food that you eat they that pie that slice of rhubarb pie you're eating was baked by the woman behind the counter that served it to you you know the, the, people forget about and, and when they when some of my friends get a little nervous and say well there's so much commercialism all these souvenirs and shields and decals and 
I say, what? Well, don't you know this is a commercial highway? That's what it's all about. It's a road of barter and trade. It's a, a road of hospitality. It, it's a way to get from here to there and to make the whole journey your destination. It, it keeps you going, it fuels your machines and your body, it entertains you, it gives you sustenance, it plays with you as you move along from this point to the next to the next. When I think of 66 in my mind's eye, I don't see state lines, I don't see county borders, I don't see city limits. I see a seamless linear village that stretches from Lake Michigan to the Pacific. And that's what it is. And this is all one family of Route 66. Sometimes dysfunctional, but it's always family. Is uh, that a little bit of that love and joy going to spread to all the U.S. routes in the country? It's, it's my personal goal for Route 66 road, road Warriors to spread the wealth. Uh, at this year's summit, we had representatives from the Great Jefferson Highway, another fine highway. Just as it hasn't gotten the press historically that Route 66 has gotten. You know, I wrote a book about the Father Road, uh, about the Lincoln Highway, yeah, 100 the, years old. I saw the uh, documentary you were in last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the classic father road. So, but 66ers have an obligation to help all the other roads, the father road, the crazy aunt and uncle roads, all of them, all these two lane road experiences. Uh, and we know that these roads can no longer handle the traffic. That's why we have all these super slabs. But isn't it great that we've preserved some examples of the past? So when you go down 66 or the Lincoln Highway or the Jefferson or the Dixie Highway, you're actually experiencing authentic America, warts and all. I don't over-romanticize it. You know, you can walk into a cafe or a pie palace on one of these two lanes and you can get Tomain poison. But you might also find the meat life, meatloaf platter you'd kill your mother for. <laughs> so it's a roll of the dice. It's excitement. It's not predictable. That's the main thing. It's not predictable. It's not the same. Yes. In the interstates, it's the same. If you're on an interstate highway, if you're on 44 or 40 or one of the other of the five interstates paralleling 66, you might as well be on an airport runway. There's slabs of monotony. When you pull up to the Golden Arches and talk to a metal box, you know you're going to get your lunch in a styrofoam box. And it's the same lunch you'd get whether you were in Seattle or Schenectady. It's predictable. The mother road is not predictable. It's a crooked road. And we all know that straight roads are roads of improvement, but it's the crooked roads that there are the roads of genius. 66 is such a road. It's crooked. Okay, thank you. Good. It, it pretty well. Up. You're uh, interviewing Michael Wallace when I showed up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we were in, uh, we visited. Oh, what that? is that? Oh, uh, that's. Uh... The great thing about this camera is I can actually move it around. That's why it's My name is Jim Hinckley, and it's H-I-N-C-K-L-E-Y. And uh, who do you do you like to be an author? An author. Uh, my specialty is Route 66, travel, obscured trivia, and the American auto industry development between 1885 and 1940. And um, Kim Lara tells me that you have a very interesting story. Well, 
gosh, you know, that's kind of tough to, to figure. I've got quite a few interesting stories. Since we're on Route 66, I suppose that's where we'll start. My first trip on Route 66 was 1959. My family likes to tease me and tell me that I was actually potty trained on Route 66. Uh, most everything in my life, you can cue the Rod Serling music at this point, but most everything of importance in my life is literally tied to Route 66. We moved to Arizona in the summer of 1966 on Route 66. Uh, at that time, I wasn't too fascinated with the desert. I thought it was the place they warned me about in Sunday school. Uh, we lived on the pre-1952 alignment of Route 66, which is now Oatman Road. It goes up through Oatman. I learned to ride a bicycle. I learned to drive on that section of Route 66. When I started my uh, John Wayne period, when I got older and fell in love with the whole cowboy ranch life and started working cattle ranches and rodeo, uh, my f the first ranches I worked on were out of Hackberry, Arizona, the X-Bar 1 and some of the early ranches there, and so I drove Route 66. When my wife and I started dating about 30 some years ago, I was working ranches up out of Chino Valley, Arizona, and I had a 1946 GMC pickup. Obviously, it's not going to be driven on the interstate at 40 miles an hour, so I drove Route 66 to come see her on weekends. And uh, so Route 66 has been just an integral part of my life. Um, I've been asking a lot of people about this. What is it really about the route? Because it's really, ultimately, it's just a piece of asphalt or Portland cement. What is it really about the route? Well, for a simplistic explanation is that from its inception, Route 66 has always had the best press and publicity. The highway was christened in November of 26. By February of 27, Cyrus Avery had formed the U.S. Highway 66 Association. And one of the first things they did was start an advertising and marketing campaign for claiming Route 66 as the main street of America. Today, the interest in the road is, uh, it defies any description. It's become uh, Paul Bunyan, Pecos Bill, all rolled into one. It symbolizes America, the best of the, the America. It has become a uh, living, breathing time capsule with an overlay of Disneyland. It's, it's 2,000 miles of Mayberry. It's, uh, and it's truly an amazing phenomenon what is happening on this road. The international fascination uh, is transforming communities up and down the road. And, uh, talking about transforming communities, this community, first time having the festival here, and partly because of something really bad that happened here. I think it's great the city's hosting this, and even even when you take out of the equation the tragedy of a few years ago with a tornado, this is a real blessing to the community. And for a multitude of reasons, you've got people in this community that are working to harness the resurgent interest in Route 66 as a catalyst for transformation and development. And they're working with other communities, like with Galena to pool resources to build these communities. And uh, so the festival is an important part of that, an integral part. But I think this will snowball. You, you've got, first of all, you're introducing the international community to what Joplin and Galena area has. And second of all, you're showing the people here in Galena what a sense of community, their community built along Route 66, and you're inspiring, instilling enthusiasm and excitement about what this can be as a, as a catalyst for economic development, for the transformation of your historic districts. All right, is there anything you can add, anything you didn't talk about? Well, all I can say is that uh, 
there's no end in sight. It's, it's actually growing exponentially every year. I have to be blunt, uh, 20 years ago, I thought this was going to be a fad, but it doesn't. It's, it's increasing exponentially every year. There are currently uh, Route 66 associations in more than a dozen countries. There are tour companies that specialize in Route 66 tours operating in 16 countries. And now China is, uh, there. there's an estimated 20 million tourists from China coming here within four years. And to show you the draw of this, China, they just, uh, GM China just finished a series of commercials for the Cadillac. Uh, that were filmed for the Chinese market and they were filmed on Route 66. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. You bet. You betcha. This gentleman up here, uh, so I won't plagiarize for that one right here. <laughs> he described it the best I've ever heard about Route 66. Check, 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 check. Uh, uh, your name is? Buzz Waldmeyer. And uh, your brother is? Uh, Bob Waldmeyer. He was the old traveling Route 66 hippie artist who uh, befriended everybody along the highway. And um, what, do you, uh, what would you think that your brother, I guess you by legacy, would like to, to think about being proud of, especially coming here to Joplin and what happened here? Just I think my brother would have wanted to say, I'm, well, first of all, I'm a capitalist and I fried hamburgers for a living, you know, and stayed in one place, raised a family. Bob pretty much made the, made the family uh, the road and all the people along the highway, his family. And he was always encouraged people to slow down and smell the roses. I know that's a cliche, but that's what it was, you know. Bob time was travel the highway and appreciate what, what's there. You know, don't try to change it, just appreciate it and live with what you have and everything. And you've seen his artwork all up and down the road. Yeah, uh, unfortunately he passed away in 2009 and uh, I'm doing what I can to reprint and keep his artwork available to, you know, people who, who want to uh, take a little bit of, of Bob with them or put it on their wall or, you know, remember the easy lifestyle. That he, yeah, I think he is. Yeah, I've talked to some people, and they tell me they talk to him when they're out there late at night, so I don't know. So sort of the spirit of 66? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, and I mean, in general, what is the spirit? The spirit of Route 66 is entrepreneurship, I probably mispronounced that, and just hard work and, uh, you know, being slow and trying to make your life and, you know, friendliness, be friends with everybody and be friends with nature. Uh, I think that's the spirit of the highway. All right, anything you can add, anything you can say? Yeah, just like Bob said, you know, take it slow and easy and... The only thing you should take with you is pictures. I do a lot of that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.
Lucy.